hey guys and girls, how's it going? Hope you guys are having a great week. So I'm back today um, with kind of a response video slash gaming news video. Um, this one obviously is Anthem related. I'm sure it's taken me a while to actually post my thoughts on this, but I wanted to do some research. I wanted to get together the kind of response video that I wanted to give to this. So you all know that last Tuesday, uh, Jason Schreier basically answered, answered the question that we've all been wondering, which is what happened to Anthem? Um, he released an expose on Bioware um, and basically exposed everything. You know, what happened over the last seven years at Bioware, why Anthem? became the game it was, why it was released in the state it was, pretty much what went wrong. Um, it was a really, really good article. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend that you read it. It's quite a long, lengthy article, about 11,000 words. Um, but we expect this kind of thing from Jason Schreier. He's done a lot of exposés on the past and his sources are always really, really good. Um, and they're just as good in this article. I think he asked 19 uh, current and ex-developers um, at Bioware that basically worked on Anthem, um, had lots of sources and it's a really, really good article. If you haven't read it, definitely go and read it. I'll put the link in the comment section below. Now this video, it's not gonna be a blow by blow of the of said article. You can go away and read that article yourself. Um, I'm not gonna tell you word for word what it said, but I am gonna talk about the general things that we learned from it to sort of explain why Anthem was such a failure. And I want to talk more about how Bioware responded, how Bioware's leadership have responded and really sort of discuss what it means for the game industry, what lessons can be learned from it and, and what the solution is really going forward and what we as gamers should do or can do or generally what needs to happen. And um, these are not going to be easy questions and easy answers in this video, but I'm going to give my thoughts on it and I hope you guys will follow me. I hope you guys will enjoy it. So let's basically cover the article very briefly. So it's an incredibly lengthy article. It takes like an hour to read through it. But Jason Schreier basically summed it up into sort of four key points, really, as to why Anthem failed um, and why the game was released in the state it was. Now, the first reason was due to uh, really poor management, indecision, a leadership that couldn't you know, create a consistent vision for Anthem, a leadership that didn't listen to feedback provided by its staff and its developers, and just really indecisive leadership. Now, uh, Anthem, when it was first sort of um, created or it was first envisaged, um, that was back in 2012. At that time, uh, Mass Effect 3 was still um, sort of in production coming towards the end of the production of Mass Effect 3 and Casey Hudson and a small team um, led the way on this and it was originally called Project Dylan because it was supposed to be the game that that gamers would talk about for generations to come it was supposed to change gaming as we knew it introduce something new something original unfortunately it, it failed in that massively but the, the the original vision for Anthem was very very different to what we ultimately got in in the end and that's simply because the game changed in so many different ways there are so many iterations and um, the leadership couldn't really settle on what they wanted to do originally it was, wasn't supposed to be a looter shooter game um, it was supposed to be this big huge alien world um, that sort of was very dangerous and it had a lot of you know really dangerous environmental hazards huge huge creatures gravity was you know crazy on this planet and will pull down alien ships from space um, and it was kind of more like a survival action game where you would play it online and multiplayer with your friends and you would have to go out into the world and try to survive as long as you possibly could do and investigate you know why this world was so vol volatile what were causing all these sort of crazy um, ideas the game originally was supposed to be called beyond um, anthem was a very last minute uh decision that happened really before E3 2017 um, because they couldn't get the rights for Beyond. All these things changed so often. Um, flying was in, then flying was out. The terrain was different. Later on, it sort of moved more into a looter shooter and its leadership really couldn't sort of agree on any, you know, set 
idea or how to sort of go about making this game a reality. It spent five years in pre-production and actually the bulk of the game was only developed in the last 12 to 18 months. That's insane. Um, and you've kind of got to give props to Bioware for producing the game in the state that it was. Um, you know, if they only did it in like a 12 month period. But yeah, it didn't actually start proper production until January 2018. I think it had like one mission done at that time, according to the article, which is just just mind boggling um, when you look at that. So what are some of the reasons why it wasn't able to develop as quickly? One, indecision with leadership. Casey Hudson left. Um, they lost kind of their Jean-Luc Picard um, leader, you know, to give them some direction. It talked about where they'd have meetings between different leadership and no one could sort of agree on anything. Uh, you know, they go start talking about flight and sort of say, well, what about this? Or, you know, what about that? And then they wouldn't resolve anything by the end of it. It would take a year before any action was actually taken. So leadership was obviously a big, big, big problem. Um, even the leadership itself, you know, it, it wouldn't allow the developers to sort of you know, reference or draw similarities to Destiny, especially when it was starting to go more towards the looter shooter. A lot of developers were trying to talk about the fact that it was becoming similar to Destiny. They wanted to focus on Destiny, to focus on what that game did well, on the mistakes that it made, and leadership would not even let them mention that word. It was like a taboo, so they weren't even allowed to talk about Destiny, let alone look at it, which explains why Anthem came across all the pitfalls that Destiny had as well, um, if not more so, and, you know, why they didn't sort of have this amazing loot system like Destiny had, because they didn't even look at the loot in Destiny, how that worked. They didn't even have a design team, a big enough or skilled enough design team to look at that. So it's just that really poor sort of leadership, um, not really listening to their staff. The other big issue that uh, Jason Shry talks about is the Frostbite engine. Um, there are a lot of EA policies that are just ridiculous, really stupid. Games of the service as a service is one of them. Microtransactions is another one of them. Loot boxes was another one. But one of the biggest problems, I think, with EA uh, developers is this constant, you know, fixation on the fact that they all have to use the Frostbite engine. This was a policy that, that dates back to Patrick Soderlund. I think in 2013, where he stipulated that all um, developers at EA had to use this Frostbite engine. Now, the Frostbite engine was designed by DICE, uh, which is the team behind Battlefield. It is meant for a, so, a, a first-person shooter. That is what it's meant for. It's not meant for a third-person RPG. So, you know, Bioware, you know, they talked about the fact that uh, they had huge problems with Dragon Age Inquisition when they were trying to use that, um, with Mass Effect Andromeda, where they were having to create things from scratch be simply because those were not available in the engine they were working on um, and then in Anthem they had an even bigger problem because not only did they have to you know create these save load uh, systems the 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 inventory systems and that kind of thing but then they also had the extra challenge of having to build it from scratch because it was an online game that they hadn't had any experience in previously so the frostbite engine was a huge huge problem on top of that then, uh, Bioware also had to fight for resources. They were constantly understaffed from the, from the sounds of this article, having staff, you know, pulled out of Bioware because he had some experience working on Frostbite um, to go and work on like FIFA because FIFA brought in more money. There was then an expert sort of technical help team at DICE, you know, in the Frostbite team, and they would sort of go out to sort of put out fires and help with issues and problems. Um, but trying to get their time and resources to get that help was very, very difficult. And a lot of different develop developers were fighting for their attention and often Bioware would lose because their games don't make as much money. So it just sounds like, you know, the whole policy and, and the whole sort of work ethos and everything at EA is just really, really toxic. And it's just about developers competing with each other rather than supporting and working together uh, to try and get support, which they definitely needed. Um, so that just sounds really, really awful. Then, of course, at Bioware, they talked about the fact that there are these internal divisions within the company 
company, um, particularly between Edmonton and Austin. There's this view of like the A team, the B team and the C team. So the A team was like Edmonton. That's the original team that bought us Dragon Age and also the Mass Effect trilogy. And they're seen as sort of the original Bioware, you know. And then you've got the uh, Austin team. They're the team that bought us Star Wars The Old Republic. Um, and then, of course, you had the C team, which was uh, Bioware Montreal. Of course, the ill-fated team that bought us Mass Effect Andromeda and were eventually closed down and uh, moved into EA Motive. But there's, there was this constant sort of feeling within Bioware, according to the article, that the A team Edmonton were almost kind of better than Austin. And this view that like the A team, like Edmonton, would come up with the ideas and Austin was sort of implement them and there was almost this this it sounds like a lot of arrogance and and you know a lot of conceitedness and even Austin would go to Edmonton because Austin are the team that have experience in online games they have experience with Star Wars the Old Republic with a huge open world online MMO and we're trying to sort of go to Edmund to say well listen that's not going to work you know the way you've got the the Fort Tarsus and the open world you're going to be breaking gamers apart it, it's going to get frustrating for people to have to wait um, for other people to catch up before they can carry on and you know hurrying people along to listen to sort of cutscenes and story elements and that kind of thing and and just sort of trying to give them a little bit of uh, advice you know based on their own experiences and what they learn from it and from the sounds of it by where Edmonton just did not want to listen and they just did not listen to this experience which is just downright awful and then the fourth thing obviously we got was that the studio is in crisis the amount of anxiety and depression uh, rife within Bioware is so heartbreaking to read to hear about uh, stress leave is a common occurrence in Bioware you know developers taking weeks sometimes even months uh, off of development you know mandated leave from their doctors simply for their own mental health and well-being and you know this crunch being you know crunch time being a terrible problem in Bioware there's this constant idea in the article of the Bioware magic um, which is the view that you know if you really work hard um, and really push and put in lots of hours and all the extra hours and manpower that in the end somehow it'll all come together and it will all coalesce um, into this you know great final product and this idea of bioware did it again and this bioware magic now this this idea of crunch and bioware magic is not a new thing for bioware it's, it goes right back uh, even right back to sort of the, Ma the mass effect trilogy and mass effect 3 particularly but apparently in dragon age inquisition the crunch was so bad mental health was was so so poor and stress and anxiety that even some of the developers were hoping that dragon age inquisition would fail that they were disappointed that the game was re received so well that it got game of the year and they were hoping that it would fail that it would tank um, simply to show that you know Bioware and EA that you can't sustain uh, video game development in the way that it is at the moment you just can't do it you can't sustain it now maybe we're seeing that now especially with Mass Effect Andromeda being a, a, a big disappointment and also the terrible state that Anthem was released in as well perhaps we're going to see that um, that that is finally the message that Bioware and EA are going to get um, but those are the kind of the main things that they were talking about this article was so hard to read um, I'm a huge huge Bioware fan they're the reason I became a gamer they're the reason I became a youtuber so to read the fact that the Bioware have have fallen like this that this is such a problem at Bioware and, and to read all these things is is truly heartbreaking you know as a Bioware fan it absolutely is now how did Bioware respond to this article initially not very well um, their initial response was incredibly disappointing um, they actually released a comment um, several minutes after I think it was like 10 minutes after the article was was announced or was released um, and this is you know officially what they said um, and they were kind of 
dismissive, you know, in their response. And, and they sort of said, you know, they chose not to comment or participate in the story because we felt that there was an unfair focus on specific team members and leaders who did their absolute best to bring this totally new idea to fans. We didn't want to be part of something that was attempting to bring them down as individuals. We respect them all and we built this game as a team. Now, I myself personally don't think that Jason Schreier's article was unnecessarily harsh. I don't think it focused on individuals or placed blame with individuals. Um, I think it highlighted some very real problems within Bioware that needed addressing and that do need uh, raising to, you know, to public attention if anything's going to change. Um, and I think a lot of the, you know, 19 developers that spoke to Jason Schreier sort of spoke to him anonymously in hope that Bioware would listen to this and that they would respond and that perhaps change would eventually come. Um, they even, you know, sort of dismissively say, you know, we hear the criticisms that were raised by the people in the piece today and we're looking at that alongside feedback that we receive in our internal team surveys. We put a lot of focus on better planning to avoid crunch time and it was not a major topic of feedback in our internal uh post-mortems and then finally they say you know we don't see the value in tearing down one another or one another's work we don't believe articles that do that are making our industry and craft better well on that respect I very much disagree with Bioware I think articles like the one that Jason Schreier has written are incredibly important they need to be done um, and you know developers and publishers need calling out on this it is a huge huge problem um, in the industry and I think articles like the one Jason Shire wrote are very very important and you know I support them wholeheartedly now response to this um, response by Bioware was not very um, positive a lot of people were quite disheartened. A lot of people were quite critical of the way that they responded and were hoping, you know, for a better response. And on Wednesday uh, afternoon, Casey Hudson actually uh, emailed uh, the staff at Bioware, um, I guess privately, and then it was kind of leaked to Kotaku. But according to Jason Australia, I think he actually copied him in on the email. Um, but this is what this is what Casey Hudson had to say, and it was a lot more positive sounding um, from from what he had to say so he basically said hey Bioware I wanted to get a note out to you to share my thoughts on the Kotaku article and the online discussion it has raised the article mentions many of the problems in the development of Anthem and some of our previous projects and it draws a link between those issues and the quality of our workplace and the well-being of our staff these problems are real and it's our top priority to continue working to solve them now, I like that. I like the fact that he is saying, yes, there is a very, very real problem um, and it does need addressing. Um, he, he continues on. I'm not going to read you the whole thing because uh, it is out there for you to read. But he then sort of, you know, goes on to say, you know, I'm not going to tell you. Um, he basically said... Um, I was and continue to be excited to help drive improvements in those areas because I, I love this studio and above all, I want to create a place where all of you are happy and successful. I'm not going to tell you I've done a good job at that and on a day like today, I certainly feel like I haven't. But some of the steps we've taken towards this include a more focused studio mission and values so that we have clarity on what we are here to do and how we define a high standard for our studio culture. We updated our studio structure around a matrix so that department directors can be fully focused on individual career support and well-being. We are defining better role clarity so that people can succeed better against clear expectations. And we are putting in place production changes that will provide for clearer project vision, as well as, as a significant post-production period that will further relieve pressure and anxiety on teams during development. I know there's much more to do and we will talk in more detail about other actions we have been planning in response to internal feedback and postmortems at next week's all hands um i'm committed to getting us to a place where we are delivering on the highest 
expectations for Bioware games through a work environment that's among the very best in the world. With your help, we will get there. So I quite liked his email. I thought it was from the heart and it definitely showed that, you know, leadership, at least with Casey, are wanting to to obviously do things. Whether or not this is going to happen, we'll have to wait and see. We'll definitely have to keep an eye on Bioware and see what is going to be coming in the future. Uh, I think it's important to, to keep putting that pressure on Bioware. I think it's important to keep an eye on it. Um, absolutely. Now, this issue with Crunch, it's very important to say that it is not just unique to Bioware. Cr the crunch in the video game industry, the rife anxiety and pressures and depression and the terrible work-life balance, um, the pressures on video game developers. This has been a problem in the video game industry for over a decade, for years. And it's something that Jason Schreier has been covering for a long time. He's produced many, many articles, many big, well-known, well-loved video game developers are notorious for crunch. He did an article on Rockstar where he talked about Red Dead Redemption 2 and how a lot of people were sort of putting, you know, 70, 80 hour weeks into that game and sometimes that their crunch wouldn't only be for a couple of weeks towards the end of development but that it could be for years, um, years on end, that there's a lot of pressure within the department, there's a lot of um, sort of a cult of fear that you know if you if you don't put in that that work that you're not going to get uh, promotions that you might even lose your job you know those kinds of things even my most well-loved studio CD Projekt Red you know even their CEO Marcin Iwinski said that Crunch you know on The Witcher 3 it was and he quoted this he said a necessary evil um, it's a massive massive problem you know visceral is the same um, they all do it. They all have crunch. They all have huge, huge problems um, with this in the video game industry. The way in which developers are treated is absolutely abysmal, in my opinion. Look at the way that Telltale Games treated their staff. Um, it's awful, and it's a big problem that needs to be addressed. Now, what can gamers do? What is the answer? It's not going to have an easy solution absolutely not because the problem is complex it's very very complex there are lots of reasons behind you know why crunch exists not justifying any of it but certainly there are a lot um even if you look at um the leadership and the indecision with bioware's leadership to a degree you can kind of understand why they were so indecisive because there's a lot of pressure on video game developers on leadership teams to perform you know particularly when we look at how much of a disappointment Mass Effect Andromeda was and what happened to Bioware Montreal of course there's a huge amount of pressure on that leadership there with Anthem to make sure you know as Bioware's first IP that it is impressive that it hits the the targets in terms of sales that EA are looking for that it gets really good Metacritic scores that it meets everybody's expectations and that puts a lot of pressure on management and a lot of pressure on video game developers you know and again it creates that cult to fear you know if we don't perform our, is our studio are we going to get shut down are we going to lose funding you know am, am I going to be made uh, redundant I mean, am I going to lose my job and have to go elsewhere particularly if you've been working for a studio for like 10 15 years and, and they feel like family there's a lot of pressure um, on there, absolutely. Um, sometimes, you know, there is completely unrealistic expectations on, on developers, and there's a lot of pressure from both gamers and publishers. You know, gamers always want the next biggest, best thing. They want new IPs, they want new original ideas, something different every time. That's a lot, you know, that is quite a lot of pressure on video game developers. Video games themselves, they are an art form, and the nature of video game development, you know, it, the most important thing with video game development is iteration. And, you know, the nature of iteration is that you're constantly changing things, you're constantly, you know, you're working on stuff and then it gets discarded and you have to work again and perfect it again and you're redoing your work every time. So the work that you, you know, painstakingly make and you put your heart and soul into it just gets thrown away because of a, you know, a, a particular creative decision. So, Video game development is hard. It is not easy at all. And, and so obviously, you know, sometimes crunch happens because if you change an idea, 
you have to do your part because maybe 20 other people are waiting for you to do your part before they can do their part and you've got a time limit to do that. So I get why crunch exists. I get why it happens. I don't agree with it. I don't think it's right, but I certainly can understand, you know, where it comes from and why it exists. Um, what's the answer? I know a lot of people um, are, you know, talking about boycotting Bioware now. A lot of people are talking about, you know, do I boycott Bioware? Even GamerMD83, who's one of the biggest Bioware fans, um, a really good YouTuber. She's she was one of the inspirations for me going into YouTube. She actually did a video uh, last week where she outright said, I'm going to bo boycott Bioware. You know, that is, I can't in good conscience buy any future Bioware games knowing that developers have to go through such turmoil, have to, you know, suffer, you know, in terms of their own he mental health and their own well-being and their relationships, that they have to suffer like this for me to enjoy their game. You know, I can't really enjoy their game because I feel some degree of guilt. Um, and I can see where GamerMD83 is coming from. Um, my response to that, though, is if you boycott Bioware, you've got to boycott every game developer because they're all guilty for it you know they all do it so if if you know you'd have to boycott cd project red because they'll do crunch you'd have to boycott rockstar because they do the same naughty dog as well are, are known for crunch as well so you would have to boycott every game um when reading you know these articles by jason schreier which i'll put a link to as well he did talk about um particularly with rockstar how um a lot of people were having to work long hours over time they would get paid an annual salary, but then the, all these extra hours, they wouldn't actually get any overtime for that. They wouldn't get paid any extra. And the extra money they got came when that game sold. So if that game did well in terms of the sales, then they would get an end of year bonus. They would kind of make up, you know, for all that hard work and, and they, would, they would use that to obviously support their family and, and everything going forward. So, you know, if, if you do put boycott the games, it's not only the publishers that you are harming, it's also the developers as well, because those annual bonuses that they're, that they're relying on, you know, for having put all those hours of work in, they're not going to get those um, if we as gamers do them, boycott them. Um, so you've got to think about that as well. Um, even in the article, I'm going I'm to read this here because I found this quote really interesting. And um, in this article, Jason Schreier basically said, um, some fans have asked if they should avoid buying or playing Red Dead Redemption 2 to show for support for those who have tough experiences making it. But many of Rockstar's current and former employees, even those who had the worst things to say about the company say they're against the idea for one those who put long weeks into the game want people to see what they've done also given that this year's bonuses will be based on royalties any sort of large-scale boycott may hurt rockstar employees more than it helps some current employees have said what fans can instead do those people say is speak out about crunch and workplace issues like this, helping put public pressure on the company. And I think that's one of the, the things that we can do as gamers. I think it's important for us to take a stand against this kind of thing. I think it's important for YouTubers, streamers, gamers, journalists, everybody to be talking about this, to keep this relevant, to keep this in the public eye, to make sure that we're holding these developers and we're, we're holding these uh, leadership and the publishers accountable for the way in which they treat their staff. Um, so I think that is very important. And I think the biggest thing that needs to happen for game developers is unionization. The fact that the video game industry is not unionized is just shocking for me. And that really needs to happen. You know, change, pressure needs to come from without, but change very much needs to come from within as well. Developers need to get together they need to unionize. This has to happen, you know, where developers have key rights and protections under law so that, you know, they can't, we can't have things happen that like happened with Telltale Games where they're just let go in, in hundreds of people are, you know, sacked on the spot and given like literally, you know, a day's notice if that and told to you know pack up their desks or you know are treated in this way and 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 have such terrible working conditions definitely unionization is one of the solutions for me so 
that's pretty much, you know, my response to Jason Schreier's article, my thoughts on Bioware, my thoughts on video game crunch um, and video game development as a whole. Um, I hope you guys found this video interesting at least. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing my opinion on it. I was intending for this to be a shorter video, maybe 15 minute, but of course there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to share. And I wanted to share my thoughts, my opinions and what I've generally been thinking about it. I will put a link to all the articles um, in the comment section below for you guys to go and read them um, because they are well worth a read and they're very, very interesting uh, to read as well. Um, now, very quickly at the end of this, I just want to talk a little bit about my boycott for EA because I have had a few people asking why did I bother playing Anthem. Um, I am still boycotting EA, um, but when it comes to the games, I'm taking each game um, on an individual basis. So I did play A Way Out and I did play... Um, um, Unraveled 2 because both those games are by indie developers yes they're published by EA but they're by indie developers they are single player games exclusively they have no online element to them um, and and so therefore you know no microtransactions or anything like that so I felt like I could uh, support those studios and that's why I bought them I didn't think it was fair to punish you know these small indie developers that have the things I love in them simply because they've got the EA name on them. Um, so I decided to play those two. With regards to Bioware, um, Bioware is a company that I can never um, boycott. They're an exception, unfortunately, to the rule. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, wherever you view it. Bioware, the reason I became a, a, a full gamer, you know, like, you know, a serious gamer, I would say. I game before them, but Bioware... Their games are what made me fall in love with gaming. Their games, the Mass Effect trilogy, the Dragon Age, um, you know, Knights of the Old Republic, those games are what made me believe that video games are a, an art form and they made me fall in love with games. The ending of Mass Effect 3, that made me want to become a YouTuber. So Bioware have a very close place Um to my heart so i i can't i just cannot boycott them i disagree with the way in which um you know anthem was released i definitely think serious things need to be done at bioware they really owe that to their supporters their fans gamers um and to their community um so i'm not going to boycott bioware i will still be covering bioware content on my channel that will always exist on my channel um and, and that's generally why i played anthem because i wanted to see what bioware had to offer um and it's just very disappointing that that it wasn't um, what it could have been. You know, it had so much potential that just was never realized. So that's my reason why I didn't boycott Anthem, why I decided to buy it. I did trade in on the game, obviously, so I didn't pay for it. Um, well, full price. I traded in with games. But but yeah, those are my thoughts on, on the boycott. If you disagree with that, that's fair enough. That's your right to, to disagree with it. But I at least wanted to explain to you my thought process around it. With every single game I do play, I do do my research. I don't pre-order games now. I will check reviews out on there um, when I buy and play the game. Um, and I take every game at its own face value. And if it's a game I'm interested in playing, I will certainly play it. Um, but also as a YouTuber, I feel it's, it's kind of my duty to cover this stuff, you know, even to cover the, the really, you know, vile side of the game industry. And I think it's my duty to cover it for you guys. So you guys are informed, you know, what's going on and you can make the best decisions as gamers, you know, in terms of what to spend your time and money on. And I think it's important to cover that stuff, you know, even with EA, I'll still do news features on EA. I'm not saying go out and buy that game. I'm saying this is what's happening. This is the game. You make your own decision as to whether or not you're going to play it. You're all adults. You can make your own choices. Um, but anyway, those are my thoughts. I hope you guys um, appreciate that. Of course, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. As always, guys, thank you so much for all your continued support. I do really appreciate it. I will be back on Saturday on Twitch, and I'm going to be live streaming on Twitch. I'm going to let you guys know on Friday which game has been chosen for you guys to tune in for that. And uh, please look forward to that. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a great week. Take care, and as always, happy gaming.
Bye, guys. Thank you.